Welcome to part two, a special presentation on Korean immigration history. Discussed in part one, this presentation is an effort to show the diversity of the Korean immigration experience and to show that Korean immigrants to the United States are not just the model minority and not just the high profile success story, but to show that the history goes back to the late 19th century and that Korean immigrants really experience many different challenges and difficulties during that time. I am Lian Yu, and I'm a professor of Korean history at Korea University. So to start with the history, we have to go back to 1882, when Korea and the United States signed their first treaty together. And a couple years after this, U.S. missionaries began to arrive in Korea and they started to establish schools and hospitals and as a result there were many Koreans who converted to Christianity. Many of those then ended up immigrating to the United States. So Koreans such as Sajay who immigrated in 1884 and then became the first naturalized Korean U.S. citizen and he did this in 1890. He was also followed by other Koreans such as Sigmund Rhee, who would go on to become the first president of the Republic of Korea. And he immigrated to the United States in 1904. There was also the legendary independence activist An chang -ho who immigrated to the U.S. in 1902 with his wife. And after settling there, had children, and many of his children were also involved in the independence movement. In fact, when World War II broke out, three of his children joined the U.S. military. So Philip Ahn's name is derived from actually his Korean name. His Korean name being Philip. And Pil, the, the Chinese character meaning necessary, and Lip, the second character, meaning to establish or foundation. So this name was given to him and it is influenced by his father's intense dedication to the Korean independence movement. He devoted his entire life to trying to restore independence from Japanese colonial rule. And as a result, when Philip Ahn started to act in movies, he often played the roles of Japanese or Chinese. And this was of great consternation to his father because he was such a proud Korean and a Korean patriot. Uh, but what Philip Ahn really did was he laid the foundation for future generation of Korean actors and entertainers. And then his sister, Susan Ahn, uh, who later became Susan Ahn Cuddy, she also joined the U.S. Navy. And after she joined the Navy, she became the not only the first Asian American female to join the U.S. Navy, but she was also the first Korean American and Asian woman to be a gunnery officer, which meant that she was teaching American soldiers how to shoot guns and shoot down enemy planes. So she was quite um, prolific in her years. She later on became lieutenant and then would go on to work for the National Intelligence Agency, the Department of Defense, and uh, was very involved with working for United States intelligence. Finally, uh, there's Ralph Ahn, who was also uh, an actor. He followed in his brother's footsteps, but he also joined the Navy. And according to an interview with him, he describes his life experiences as a Korean immigrant growing up in Los Angeles, California, and all of the different experiences of racial discrimination. So for example, when he was in high school, he was 
not invited to some parties because there were going to be、uh, girls there or women there, and because of the miscegenation laws, he was not invited.、Uh, he also describes an, an experience in high school on Halloween, walking down the street, being accosted by LA police officers, taken to jail, and being mistaken for Japanese because this was a time during World War II. When anti-Japanese sentiment was at its height, and when World War II broke up and the United States decided to join World War II, he said that he and his friends they all wanted to enlist, but they were not able to because they were suspected of working with the Japanese because they were Korean, and so it took some time before they were able to actually join the military in the United States. So we hope through this special presentation that this provides more understanding about the Korean immigrant experience in the United States, as we've seen through the movie Minari how、uh, many Koreans have struggled as they've immigrated to the U.S. through language barriers and cultural differences. But we hope that. Uh, rather than emphasizing the differences by emphasizing the similarities, we can all prosper in our shared experience and move forward as a community. So,、uh, for us to move forward as a civilization and to try to understand and to help each other, we hope that you enjoy this presentation. Thank you.